Okay. So, in the beautiful city of Toronto, lived a man with a dream to be king, Pronto. Hey! <laughs> so he told all the people and he told all the town that he'd patch up their potholes, he'd repave their ground, he'd buy better buses to help get around. He'd turn all their frowns right upside down. He'd get rid of bike lanes that caused such disdain, but he had just one problem. That damned gravy train. That <laughs> damn gravy train? That damn gravy train? It rattles so loud, it hurts my wee brain. It roars through the libraries. <laughs> it zooms down bike lanes. <laughs> it slows down my car, it gives me migraines. But most of all, <laughs> most, most of all, what he hated was this. Those damn pinko artists, the unions, poor people, and every optimist. <laughs> and so he called all the people and he gave them a speech. The dangers of dra gravy trains he was going to preach. From high in his pulpit he wove them a tale that he knew would leave them all trembling and pale. For the gravy train cometh and it bringeth no repose. And they too would stop it, or so he supposed. The gravy train will squash us with its economic footprint. It will smash us. It will beat us. It will drown us till we stop it. It will steal away our riches and hike up all our taxes. So it really would be much more better if we all just axed it. <laughs> oh. Like cutbacks for beer, housing, and more. <laughs> and they put in their votes that he would be their new dictator. He gleefully accepted and made them this promise. I vow on this day that the gravy train shall not cometh. He set off to work with his rounded up men They grabbed pitchforks and torches to put the train to an end. <laughs> they burned and made cutbacks all through the town, following that gravy trail till the monster was found. <laughs> they reared up on bike wheels with a mouth lined with books. <laughs> its voice was a ruckus of artists and crooks. And he said with his staff all lined up at his side, You shall not pass! <laughs> There's nowhere to hide! So he ripped up the train tracks and ran the train's crew out of town, and finally, at home, for a well-deserved meal, he sat down. <laughs> he had chocolate and bacon and apple pie and roast, and a giant golden turkey he looked forward to the most. He invited the town to come celebrate this gravy train victory that made him so great. Cometh one, cometh all, and come fill your plate! But at quarter past five, there was no one around. And worse for his supper, no sauce to wash it down. <laughs> he took a deep breath. <coughs> but the air had grown stale. Could his glorious win be his great dinner's fail? There was nobody, and his turkey was dry. And it was at this moment that he started to cry. <laughs> He cried for the libraries that couldn't give him a book. Oh. He cried because Tim Hortons couldn't teach him to cook. Oh. He cried for the buses that couldn't bring his guests on time. Oh. He cried when Mark Warrior Princess snuck up from behind. Oh. 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 Call 911! Call 911! <laughs> he cried for the artist who could no longer entertain. He cried enough to fill ten closed pools whose hours he hours he'd just slain. Oh. He cried and he cried and he cried out in vain. Oh, why? Oh, why? I stopped the gravy train! <laughs> he looked out the window and saw the people were mad. But Big Brother Dove said nothing would go bad! And then maybe he realized, though he couldn't quite admit, oh. that not everything the gravy train offered was shit. <laughs> sure, it costs money and we all have to pay, but aren't some things, just some things, worth it anyway? Like public transportation and good, safe places to ride, like good books to read and warm places inside, like good food and clean air and Torontonian pride. But a good gravy train never really, truly dies. So, he walked at the door on one fine summer's day and called for the gravy train to Come and take me away! <laughs> whoop, whoop! So he gave up being Toronto's great dictator and settled instead for a plate of fries smothered in gravy.